On this episode of Sweet Point Setter Tales, we take on the Goliath of CRP fields with Major League bow hunters Matt Duff and Zach Kurjeski, and joined by Triple Creek Outfitters owner Richard Blakesley and guide Darren Green. Our special thanks to Triple Creek Outfitters for the warm Kansas welcome and letting us experience some of the best upland hunting Kansas has to offer. I'm Wade Kisner and I grew up hunting upland birds. Nothing's better than chasing a couple English setters called Sweet Lou and Adeline. Lou is a master hunter and Adeline is quickly learning the trade. These are some of our tales. Yesterday the weather was lousy, but today the conditions seem perfect for a late January bird hunt. With the setters fired up and ready to hit the ground, we followed Richard, Matt, Zach, and guide Darren Green to a 640 acre chunk of CRP, a short distance outside of St. John, Kansas. You know, in our part of the country in Iowa, we don't see CRP fields that big. No, and when you see it in person, man, it's... Yeah, he was telling us it's a section of ground. 640 acres, a mile by a mile by a mile by a mile. You know, my big thought was, how do you how do you hunt it? I mean, we had what eight or nine dogs, and we had eight hunters, but still, we we were dwarfs when we were out there, kind of walking in that. Well, thing. even spread out is a little further than we normally walk. You still couldn't cover half of it. Yeah, and you had like you know you had kept couldn't help but think you had gaps in your line where maybe you were missing some birds, but but the dogs were doing a nice job working back and forth in front of the line, but. But the field was enormous, and for me, making one pass across and a path and a pass back, you know, was two miles, and so it didn't take long for my old legs to kind of <laughs> burn up. But uh, I was okay. Yeah, you were okay. You and Tyler were okay. But the strategy was, according to Richard, was you start at one end of this big field, and you kind of start pushing making, them, pushing back and forth across this field, and you hope that you're slowly moving the birds up into that far end of the field and when you get down there if you got anything left when you get down there that you've pinched the birds kind of and you've into a, a funnel so to speak yeah more of a concentrated concentrated kind of a group and and you get to get more birds in, in gun range and and that proved out to be the fact yeah All right, so this morning, guys, we're going to take off. We got uh, good north wind, so we're going to walk into the north. Uh, there's a covey of quail down by the trees on the north end of this that uh, wasn't, wasn't a big covey to begin with, so, so we need to let it go, not not shoot at them. And there we have, uh, there's a lot of pheasants in here. I just went around and picked up, uh, we left a truck at the other end to, to come back around, and we saw, what, 20? 20 some roosters yeah. out there on the cornfield already so we need to get going all right well we appreciate it we're uh, looking forward to get uh, we get mad out there we're gonna go hunting or what right, we're gonna I'm go and we're gonna go give it a try here Late season hunts can be a challenge due to the fact that these wild birds have had a lot of hunting pressure for three months and have learned to evade not only normal predators, but man and his dogs. For this old guy, the walking was not bad as the little blue stem grass was at times waist high and open. The plan was to make passes back and forth across the field, working towards the west edge and corner a mile away. Each pass would be a mile of wear and tear on legs and feet. The field was loaded with pheasants that seemed to flush out in groups of 20 to 30 at a time, but most were well out of gun range. By the time we got to the west end to start the final push, we had watched hundreds of pheasants take to wing. Uh, at least 50 to 60 birds. I, I don't know how many roosters were mixed in there, but there's a lot of birds just got up. They're just getting way up ahead of us? Yeah, they're just too far out of gun range. Dogs ain't pointing, so let's keep going. Now and then we would catch a straggler, and our group managed to bag a couple roosters during the first couple passes. Oh, 
Oh, here he's blocking me. Come here, Hank. Come here, Hank. Hank, come here. Dead up here. Hank, dead up here. Dead up here. Hank, here. Here. Hunt dead, hunt dead. Here. Hunt dead, hunt dead. Good boy, TC. Good boy. Get in. Got one, Zach. We finally got us one over here. Richard uh, or uh, Richard got a bird. We had finally got a rooster locked down. We've had tons of birds are just real flighty today, but we had a good point over here with the dogs, um, with the hen. It just happened to be a hen, you know. Just like Richard had predicted, as we walked across the field, the shooting opportunities did increase. Rooster! That dog. That when this rooster got up, I almost dropped my shotgun at the same time he almost dropped his camera. Really? Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. I have a, I have a look at that rooster's up ahead and he's looking at that line. He's got to figure out, okay, where's the weak link in that line? That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. Some action here in Central Kansas. I don't know how many we picked up this this pass, but we've been making passes back and forth. And these wild birds are just real flighty, and uh, they've been getting up out in front of us. We were kind of pitching them down. We've gotten a pretty good bit of points this last pass, so dogs are working good, which is cool to see, man. See this many wild birds in one morning? Can't beat it. I seen the bird rock, and it went about maybe 100 yards in the lid again. I told Tyler it went down in front of us and we got up there and dog was on point. Tyler walked up next to the dog. I said, no, step right over in front of the dog. He <laughs> walked looked, over he there. Like he looked staring right at it. My <laughs> guy, he was. It was right there. So I kicked him and he kind of did a half. Tried to fly. Yeah. It, he was he flopping out running, there. Yeah. The dogs were chasing him and all of a sudden here goes Darren like Carl Lewis, 40 yard dash <laughs> after that son of a gun. And, Lays out. Yeah. Superman and dive and belly flop and grabs the pheasant. I mean, so based on what we saw earlier, I guess they, they hunt birds a little different in Kansas. They like to jump on them, or we just shoot them. So we like Iowa, to wing them, Iowa, yeah. and then you know the human element comes in. Yeah. To, you know <laughs> the thrill, the chase. We don't want to waste guess. any shotgun yeah. shells. Yeah. <laughs> hey, anything you know, I can do to entertain you guys, I'm here for you. Bird dog. <laughs> and, uh, Gaps in the line of shooters created avenues of escape for some birds, while others went into stealth mode, hoping to avoid the dogs. Bring it in. Bring it in. Don't let it get away, Brandon. Good girl. Good girl. My bird. Good shot. As we pinched the birds, each step girl, teased Brandley. us with the possibility of the next rooster. Thank you. You, you betcha. Good shot. Kansas rooster. Suddenly, to my left, Darren knocks down a rooster, and the dogs all went for the retrieve. Here, Wade. Well, finally got one knocked down. That guy was going. I was really leading the heck out of that one. Taking my first Kansas rooster was something I had on the old bucket list for 63 years. And doing it with this group of guys will always be a great memory. Oh, we've got a couple over there. We've got, I know Matt got one earlier. That one we just knocked down. Starting to pick up. We've got the blockers up there. We're kind of pinching the birds finally. Starting to see a little more action. It took a while. It was a big field, but we're finally getting up here where we're starting to see some numbers. They're starting to hold a little tighter, so we're getting some shots on them. 
So we basically would get a couple of the setters out and we would kind of put them out with mix uh, them the with GSPs the, yep. and mix them and, and then switch dogs. And we made a pass over and back, we'd switch dogs. But it kind of came Darby's turn and I think we had her and Duchess. So we had the litter mates out and, and you know, at the time they were still pretty young. And there's lots of chaos and there's dogs everywhere and shooting going on. And so for these young dogs, it's a lot to take in. And as we got about halfway across the field in that one pass, I remember Darby just like locking up like stone. Right in front of Duff, I think. He yeah. Said, he yelled yeah. over, hey, your dog's on point. That's pretty cool. And you happened there. to be right there yep. and, and Duff was right there. And, and as fate would have it, the drone is right above us at the same time. So I think we got it on film like in three different ways above and two two ways on the side uh but it was pretty it was pretty neat it turned out to be a hen unfortunately it was a hen yeah, but it turned out to it be a still hen, but cool it was still see. one of those milestones uh that you really love to have on film of uh darby making her first point on on a wild kansas uh pheasant and so that'll be one that we remember for a long long Absolutely. time and And you know, we forgot about Richard telling us that a covey of quail sometimes could be found in this field. I remember Darren's GSP going on point and he walks in to flush what we expected to be a pheasant and this covey of quail blows out. Those little boogers are smoking fast. The covey's jailbreak was in at least three different waves, heading in all directions, chased by patterns of shot from all of our guns. As the action would reach a lull, another group of birds would make a break for it. Got zero. I drew feathers on one. I think I might have hit a truck. <laughs> Head. Having spent my early youth in prime Missouri quail country, it had been a long time since I'd walked into a covey of birds at large. During the initial covey rise, Darren had turned and made an impressive shot, dropping a bird behind us in some heavy cover. As our gun barrels cooled, much to our disappointment, Darren single was the only bird taken. Even though it was just a single quail, I was taught that birds are a precious resource, and it's important to take all the time necessary to locate and recover shot game. It was not a surprise that these guys honored the same upland code. Let's see a guy. Little guy. Yeah, little guy. Honestly, late season January, birds that have been pressured. That's a good hunt this yeah, morning. We saw, we saw, gosh, we saw a lot of birds this morning. I don't know how many we saw, but we saw a gob of birds this morning. Well, that was one big, huge uh, covey of quail. That's the biggest covey of quail I've he's, seen He's been talking about, about the quail. Yeah, that, you know, I, yeah. well, it was huge, I mean, they, yeah. and they were fast. I know. Because by the time they got to us, they were, they like, were in the jet uh, stream. Mark speed. Yeah. About the time you, you somewhat behind us, we turned on those, and then they started coming right over the top of me, and then you were blasting away. Uh, oh my gosh, it was. Yeah. Uh, Didn't cut a feather. But I did get a rooster, so it took me 63 years, but I got a Kansas rooster. And so. After a quick lunch, we traveled to another large field of CRP to finish out the day. It was going to be hard to beat the morning action. With two days left, it's hard to believe that the hunting could get much better. But check out episode three, hunting with Triple Creek Outfitters near St. John, Kansas. Sweet Point Setter Tales is brought to you with support from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Wade Kisner with Sweet Point Setter Tales. Do you have an interesting story idea for a future episode? We'd love to hear about it. Drop us a line at sweetpointsetters.com.